All right, so let's go ahead and start right here. This is the top of the Drudge Report, and you know when the top of the Drudge Report looks like this, things are not going to be good. It has been a tough couple of days, and that's to say the least. You can see here stocks tumble down over 800 points. China's property fears. Bitcoin pummeled. When Bitcoin's pummeled, everyone's going to be pummeled. And so we need to talk about what in the world is going on. But more importantly... I think I'm going to share with you a silver lining in all of this. Now, this is just a hypothesis that's going to come from me. And when I get to the hypothesis, after I explain to you in sort of simple ways what is going on, because this can get really complex really quickly. When I share with you the silver lining for cryptocurrencies at the end of this road that we're currently on right now, just let me know if you agree with me or if my thinking in this is faulty, and I hope it's not, obviously, because I'm highly invested in cryptocurrencies, and I know many of you are as well, but I think it might be right, and we'll see how this is all going to play out. So first, let me just quickly sum up what in the world is going on with the stock markets and cryptocurrency today the best that I can and in the simplest way possible, and it really comes down to global economic worry. There's been this worry that's been building up in the last month or so that the global economy is going to slow down, that it cannot sustain the growth that we've been seeing. Now, there hasn't been any real catalyst to set off that worry. However, it seems that we've now seen the spark that has ignited the fear and the worry of the global economic market slowing down, and that is coming specifically from China. And as many of you may have heard already, Ready? This is coming from Evergrande's collapse in China. The Evergrande Group is a property development group in China with over 1,300 development projects in over 250 cities in China. And not only are they developing property, but they're also involved in other areas like wealth management and electric vehicles. And this group has taken out Hundreds of billions of dollars of loans. I just thought I saw a bear out my window over there. I'm going to keep this in. No edit here. I literally saw a black thing moving across my window over there. And I'm thinking, is that a bear? And I looked over and it was my dog. So everything's okay. No edit. Let's get back into Evergrande Group. Are you ready? They are going to default. They already know they're going to default. They've borrowed hundreds of billions. I think the number is like $350 billion in default, and they have about $15 billion cash on hand. And who are they going to default to? Primarily, the big problem is they're going to default to banks. So when this, one of China's biggest property development uh, and wealth management, electric vehicle uh, management groups now going to default by the hundreds of billions and going to default to banks, you can see the domino effect of disaster that's going to occur here, especially within China, which is one of the, the largest uh, economic forces in the world. And this collapse is going to have a big impact on the countries surrounding China and the global market at a time when people are fearing the slowdown's going to hit, and this to them is the big sign that it's going to hit. Now, why does this impact cryptocurrencies? By the way, there's other issues going on around the globe as well that is fostering into this, but this is the big one. But let's not get too complicated. Let's stop it right here. How is this affecting the crypto market? The reason it's affecting the crypto market, and I'm going to give you the silver lining in just a moment. But the reason this is affecting this, the crypto market so much is because when people begin to see this happening, they start pulling their money out of the market. This is the time where they get it out. And when I say the market, I mean the crypto market and stocks. They pull it out and they sort of hedge it away, save it away, whatever they're going to do with it, get it out of the market. And one of the places individuals, hedge funds, investment groups, and people begin to pull money out first is the most volatile areas. And at this point, cryptocurrency is still one of the most volatile areas to invest. It has some of the greatest potential behind it. We can make a lot of money fairly quickly in ways that you wouldn't be able to do with many different businesses or stocks that are out there. But it also is super volatile. And because of that, we're seeing individuals, investment teams, hedge funds ripping money out of cryptocurrencies like crazy right now. 
What does this mean for you and me? Because I've always been honest with you. I am a long-term player. And many individuals on YouTube are very honest too sometimes. And they'll tell you, no, I'll, I'll try to take profits when I can and buy back in and take profits and buy back in. And that's great if it works out. And, I, and hopefully if you're able to do that, I you know wish the best for you. But for me, I'm putting my money in there. I'm not touching it. I'm not touching it for five or 10 years anyway. So when we go through these crazy things, I just don't let it upset me that much. And I think in the long term, we're going to be fine. Those of you that are approaching this the same way, this is where I think the silver lining comes in. If the crypto market can weather this storm, and this is a big storm, and this is not a crypto market storm, this is a global economic storm. If the crypto market can weather this thing well, I think big investment groups, hedge funds, and individuals are going to start to look at cryptocurrency and they're going to go, oh my gosh, we just had a global economic scare, a disaster of epic proportions, talking about one of the largest property investment, wealth management, electric vehicle investment groups in China, defaulting on hundreds of billions of dollars to the banks that that gave them this money in one of the biggest economic arenas that exist in this world. A domino effect, fear, uncertainty, doubt, worry for the slowdown, and cryptocurrencies weathered it like a champ. Now, this is yet to be seen. We don't know fully how cryptocurrencies are going to weather this. We know already what's going on in the market. We can clearly see here on Coinbase, the market is down almost 10%. But because of the news, sort of expected, it's red everywhere. Look at this red mark. This is the worst. And we've gone through some tough times on this channel. We've gone through some tough times in the last year. This is the worst it's ever been. This is the worst. If the cryptocurrency market can stabilize and turn around in the face of what is going on right now, I think that investment in this area is going to skyrocket. Let's take a look at Ethereum's chart. You can see what's going on with Ethereum in the last week, right? Not great. In the last week, actually, Ethereum's only down 4.46% in the last week. It's actually not, it's not as bad. I mean, it's still not, it's not great. But if you look at it in the week long area, it's not that bad. Month, Ethereum's down 4.74% in the last month. So in the last week, almost four and a half percent. In the last month, four and a half percent. Okay, not so bad. It looks so much worse because there was these pretty big gains that were occurring and the sort of this downward trend has been sort of dramatic. But look at Ethereum. It dipped down. It hit that 3,000 area, a little bit lower than 3,000. It bounced back up. And now it just hit the 3,000 area, not quite as low as this last dip. And now it's bouncing back up. And we take a look at Bitcoin too. Bitcoin is going down. It hit uh, below that 43,000 mark and it bounced back up. Now, 44 was really where we didn't want to go below, but it went below it. And then it kind of came down and hit that 43,000 and it's bouncing back up. I'm not saying that we're seeing the cryptocurrencies bouncing off their bottom. Could this go further down? It's possible. But what I am saying to you is that if the cryptocurrency, because many people don't believe in the cryptocurrency uh, arena, investors, large groups alike, many people are just see it as, oh, it's just going to go down to a dollar. You hear people say this all the time. But if it can go through something like this and show itself strong that, hey, it didn't fold, it didn't collapse, it went nowhere. And, and if it was going to go somewhere, this is something that should have caused it to really collapse, but it didn't. I think that you're going to see many investment groups out there saying, you know what? It's not as volatile as I thought. It's not as prone to utter collapse as I thought. It's actually got a lot more strength behind it. Yet to be seen. We need to see if cryptos can hold strong throughout this storm. Again, I'm not sure what you all are doing out there, but I'm riding through the storm with you. I always have been, always will be. When I see a dip, I invest when I can. I'm a teacher. I don't got that much money to invest in dips, all right? I don't got millions of dollars on hand. I've got a little bit of money here and there that I can plug in. Um, if I have an opportunity, I might 
put some in here at, at these low these low points here. I would highly suggest you, because I know many of you are Dogecoin holders, and I've been trying to suggest you to make most of your holdings in Ethereum. And this, let me just highlight why, okay? This is Dogecoin in the last month. Actually, let's go. Dogecoin in the last day is down 5.18% in comparison to Ethereum, which is down 3.66%, okay? Ethereum in the last week is down 4.51%. Doge in the last week is down 10.72%. Ethereum in the last month is down 4.9%. Doge in the last month is down 34.66%. This is not, I'm not saying this to talk down Dogecoin. That's not the point. I am invested in Dogecoin. I like Dogecoin. My point is your greatest investment in a crypto portfolio shouldn't be a coin, which has very high potential, but also very high volatility. The downs are so down, but the highs are so high. You need your greatest investment to be something much more stable. And then with the leftover percentages, you can divvy those up how you see fit. And so although this is bad, if many of you have put in the majority of your investment in something like Ethereum, and I'm talking about a significant amount, or even Bitcoin, a Bitcoin's not as interesting potential for me as Ethereum, which is why I like to keep most of my investment here in Ethereum when it comes to the crypto market. It stabilizes it out and it helps you weather these storms. If you're just all invested in Dogecoin, what's going to end up happening is, is when you go through these storms, like the last month, for those of you that are in Dogecoin, has to be insane. I mean, you have to be thinking, what in the world is happening here? You know, it, it just could keeps going down. But for me, because my I'm, I'm diversified a little bit more, I'm not feeling the same thing. And it doesn't hurt me or hit me as hard. Now, this certainly hits me hard. Like, I don't like seeing any of this, just like none of you do. But I want to be composed about it. I want to take a look at it for what it is. Most of this is just worry. It's one entity in China. Yes, it can have crippling effects to China's economy. But guess what ends up happening after we get through this? things begin to normalize and stabilize. My hope, this is my hope, because this will be big for cryptocurrencies. If the crypto market can sustain this and weather this and hold strong and even semi-bounce back, I think people begin to look at cryptocurrencies a little bit differently. They look at them as a very strong holding, something that if you put your money in, You don't have to really fear too much because people are putting their money in cryptocurrencies, not just like they're putting their money in stocks to make money, to buy in, buy out, buy in, buy out, buy in, buy out. They're putting their money in cryptocurrencies as long-term holdings, as a hedge against the insanity. Where we run into problems is when people buy in, buy out, buy in, buy out, buy in, buy out. If people just keep their money in there, all of a sudden you have this strength. That is what needs to be seen. And I hope that is what ends up happening. Is my thinking wrong? Let me know. Leave it in the comments below. It could be nuts. Maybe I'm wrong on looking at the silver lining here. But I think I think it's right. But it's yet to be seen because I wouldn't want to pretend to you like this can't keep going further. I mean, you're talking about a lot of worry out there about this that could affect entire countries including the global economic market. I don't want to pretend like it's over, it's done or anything like that. But I'm hoping that everything holds strong. That's what I got to share with you today. I'm holding strong. Hopefully you guys are as well. I'm a long-term holder. As everything else that's come and gone, we will get through this one as well. Thank you guys for coming along with me. You are awesome. As always, I will catch you next time.